This is one of those subjects that a lot of uh, free will Baptists don't want to talk about. <laughs> we like to have our minds made up on certain things and that's the way we want it and that's the way we're going to do it and that's the way it's going to be. Amen? Somebody say any man right there. That's the way my granddaddy taught it. That's the way my granddaddy said it. And that's the way I'm going to be. Sometimes you better take the Word of God and base your beliefs on what the Word of God says. Because if the Word of God, if there's one verse in the, in the Bible that says it, you better stand on that one verse. Isaiah chapter 22. If you there, say Amen. And it was revealed, verse 14, and it was revealed in mine ears by the Lord of hosts, surely this iniquity shall not be purged from you till ye die, saith the Lord God, the Lord of hosts. Now the Bible also says in Matthew, now this is, this is another scripture we don't like to quote and uh, preach on. Matthew chapter 5. Verse 25 and 26 says this, Agree with thine adversary quickly, whilst thou art in the way with him, lest at any time thine adversary deliver thee to the judge, and the judge deliver thee to the officer, and thou be cast into prison. Verily I say unto thee, thou shalt by no means come out thence, till thou hast paid the uttermost part of it. What the Bible is telling us, when you're guilty, you're going to pay. That's right. Amen. Amen. That's what the Bible says. Let's pray. God, we love you. We come to you in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray right now, would you just have your hand on us, God. I pray that you'd strengthen us tonight through your word. Help us tonight, God, to be able, to, Lord, to take your word and rightly divide it. I pray, God, you'd strengthen each and every one right now, God, and help me, God, to preach this in a way that you'll be pleased. And we'll praise you for all you do in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. There's a line that we can cross from where there is no return. Where there's no more forgiveness, no more restoration. The Bible is plain on that. I want to preach a little while on the thought, does God kill Christians? Some people are in premature graves today. And the way some people act in church, if they don't straighten up, they're going to be in premature graves. And I'm not necessarily talking about our church. <coughs> the Bible tells us in James chapter 5, verse 19 and 20, Brethren, if any of you do err from the truth and one convert him, let him know that he which converted the sinner from the error of his way shall save a soul from death and shall hide a multitude of sin. 1 John chapter 5, verse 16 and 17 says this, if any man see his brother sin a sin which is not unto death, he shall ask, and he shall give him life for that for them that sin not unto death. There is a sin unto death. I do not say that he shall pray for it. All unrighteousness is sin, and there is a sin not unto death. So now, let me just go ahead and, and say this. God does, we know God kills sinners. The Bible is plain on that. The Bible talks about Pharaoh in Exodus chapter 14, verse 28. And the waters return and come and come with the chariots and the horsemen and all the host of Pharaoh that came into the sea after them. There remained not so much as one of them. God, God killed sinners. We know that from this, from history. We know that from, from people that we we we. I, I can tell you, I, I, there, there's a, a person that just flashed into my mind. They would come to church. I, I don't believe. I really don't believe they ever got saved. They would come to church and they would be in church for a few months. They'd be out of church. They'd be running the bar room. They'd come back, be in church for just a few months. They'd be out of church, running out there in the bar rooms, and they would just in and out, in and out, and in and out, and got killed in a, a, a car wreck a quarter of a mile from their house. Amen. God don't play. God killed the Assyrian army. The Bible says in, in 2 Kings chapter 19, verse 35, and it came to pass that night that the angel of the Lord went out and smote in the camp of the Assyrians a hundred, four score, and five thousand, and they arose early in the morning. Behold, they were all dead corpses. One angel took out 185,000 soldiers. You don't play with God. See, that's the, that's the thing, that's the problem we have in church today. There's no more fear of God. Come on. 
People don't fear God anymore. That's how come they can talk about people. That's how come they can run people down anymore. I mean, they, they have no fear of God. That's how come we got preachers uh, uh, that we know that's, in, that's in, having a hard time today because people don't fear God. We've all said it. I've all said it. I, well, while most churches did, preacher Mike, it's just a few dignified funerals and everything, everything else is straightened up. Preach. Sometimes, God's had all He's going to take. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 6, we know the, the story of the flood. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that He had made man on the earth, and it grieved Him at His heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and the creeping things and the fowls of the air, for it repented me that I have made them. God kills sinners. We've got to understand something, folks. God's not going to change. I told you this before. One of the things I remember most about when I was in Orangeburg, preacher Earl Hannah, on Wednesday nights or Sunday nights, I can't remember which, he would have a big whiteboard up there, preacher uh, 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 John, and he would teach us. And I'll never forget, I got it in, in that old Schofield Bible I got, he taught on the attributes of God. <laughs> and the main attribute of God is this. He's holy. Amen. We talk about God's love and God is a God of love. But God is holy more than He's anything else. And God's holiness will not allow Him to tolerate sin. Amen. Whether it's in a lost person or a Christian. Amen. Oh, but Christians don't sin. Where'd you come from? <laughs> come on, Rick. I'm going to get into that in a little bit and prove you to be alive. But I'm just saying, God, we know God kills sinners. We ain't a doubt in our mind. But does God kill Christians? Take your Bibles. Turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 5. First Corinthians chapter 5. I'm going to read verse 1 through 5. You there say amen. Amen. Riley, if you can put that on the screen. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, 1 through 5. It reads like this. This is Paul writing. It is reported commonly that there is fornication among you. He is writing to a church. Hey! He's writing to a church. It is reported commonly that there is fornication among you. And such fornication as is not so much as named among the Gentiles that one should have his father's wife. Now listen. And ye are puffed up and have not rather more that he that hath done this deed might be taken away from among you. For verily, as absent in body, but present in spirit, have judged already as though I were present concerning him that hath done this deed. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, when you are gathered together in my spirit, with my power of our Lord, with power of our Lord Jesus Christ, to deliver such a one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit might be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. <coughs> Did y'all hear what that said? <coughs> Does God kill Christians? According to what I just read to you, the answer is yes. Amen. Now, Adam Clark's, Adam Clark's commentary says this. There's no... Now, and, and like you, you read one commentary and you read another one and, and some of them bring to God says that this is talking about excommunication from the church. This is talking about turning them away from the church. That's not what it's talking about. Adam Clark says this, there's no evidence that delivering to Satan was any form of excommunication known either among the Jews or the Christians. It was a type of punishment administered in the extraordinary cases in which the body and the mind of an incorrigible transgressor was delivered by the authority of God unto the power of Satan. Not by the preacher, not by the deacons, not by nobody else, but by the authority of God. It ain't my job to judge nobody. It ain't your job to judge nobody. Who died and left you in charge? That ain't, that, that's God's job. God's the one that's going to do this, not you. And the thing about it is, you got some folks so high and mighty in church when something bad happened to somebody 
And they say, well, they, they deserved it. Let me tell you something. God's going to turn it right around on you if you ain't careful. Amen. But by the authority and power of God and to the power of Satan to be tortured and diseased and terrorized as a warning to all. But while the body and mind are thus tormented, the immortal spirit was under the influence of divine mercy. And the affliction, and in all probability, was in general only for a season, though sometimes it was evidently under death, as the destruction of the flesh seems to imply. But the soul found mercy at the hand of God. This is the ultimate. This is the God showing the ultimate mercy and grace that he pours out on us. I'm telling you right now, you'll never find more mercy and grace except in this scripture that I just read to you. Amen. Let me tell you something. You better not play with God. Amen. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. So God does kill sinners. This was the greatest show of mercy. Uh, and the thing about it is, you know, we, we, we can sit here and we can talk about this all we want to, but we'll never understand the mercy and the grace of God. Amen. You'll never be able to, you can't explain it. The greatest Bible scholars that have ever lived cannot explain mercy and grace. When God will show mercy to someone like this, when God will show mercy to me after the stupid stuff that I've done since I got saved, and God will show mercy to you after the stupid mess you've done since you got saved, we can't explain that. Amen. If the truth be known, Brother Robert, God should have come down and killed us a long time ago. I'm, I, I told you this, if I was God, you'd be in trouble. I give you one chance, that'd be it. Trample the blood of my son, you go. That's right. But that's the mercy and grace of God. Let me ask you, you know, I, I, I never really thought about this until studying. What about Nadab and Abihu? In Leviticus chapter 10. The Bible, all the Bible says is they offered strange fire. That's all the Bible says. Did they go to heaven? I ain't the one in charge. What about Ananias and Sapphira? Acts chapter 5. The Bible said they sold a piece of land, and the Bible said they came in and get part of it, and, and Peter said you lied to the Holy Ghost. How many times have you done the same thing? Come on. Well, we look down our long noses and they have it about you and we look down our long noses and have nice and sapphire and we're doing the same thing. And people doing worse in church. I mean, so in discord among the brethren. I mean, about these things, these things that the Lord had a seven are abomination. I mean, God, 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 it made God sick about people. So in discord among the brethren and they gossip and God ought to kill us a long time ago. But only by His grace and mercy that He didn't. That's right. Amen. Amen. You better be glad. I mean, I'll, I'll put it this way. You better be glad you ain't Muslim or you'd have been gone. <laughs> Amen. Thank God I serve Jesus. Amen. Amen. Now, I want you to just notice just a few things here. Let's notice some things about God. When there's sin in somebody's life, when God, God deals one or four ways to disobedient Christians. Number one, He'll send them to hell. But if somebody really loves God, I just don't see God doing that. Now I'm through with Baptist to the bone, and I'll get I'll get to that in, in a little bit. But I'm just telling you, according to what the Bible says, God will take a disobedient Christian. Turn him over to the power of Satan so that the flesh will be destroyed and that the soul will be saved in the day of Jesus. I read that to you. So I just don't believe that somebody that really loves God now. <coughs> How many of y'all really love God? You really, you really love God? Raise your hand. How many of y'all don't see it? So if God called time right now, would you make it to heaven? See what I'm talking about? 
So I just don't believe God's going to take a, 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 a Christian that really loves him now. Understand that. But we all make mistakes. I just don't believe God's going to send them to hell in that situation. Now, I'll get, I'll, I'm free will Baptist. I, I, I'll bring it around in, in, in a little bit. So, number one, God, God don't send them to hell, but I really don't believe God will do that. God, well, number two, God's either going to overlook their sin. I know He ain't going to do that. That's right. Amen. Amen. I know He ain't going to do that. Acts chapter 7, uh, 17, verse 30 says this The times of the ignorance God went that, but now commanded every uh, man, all men everywhere to repent. Romans chapter 6, verse 23 For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ. God will not overlook sin. Understand that God will not overlook sin. Every time you do something that's against the will of God, there will be a consequence. It might be that you come to church and just don't feel the presence of God. Then you get on an altar and you ask God to forgive you. But every time you do something wrong, every time you sin, there will be a consequence. There will be a, there, there will be a separation between you and the presence of God. And that ought to be enough right there to put every Christian on an altar begging for God to forgive them. <coughs> so he's either going to send them to hell, he's going to overlook their sin, we know he's not going to do that, or he's going to chastise the ones that he loves. Hebrews chapter 12 says this, verse 7 and 8, If ye endure chastening, then God dealeth with you as sons. For what son is he whom the Father chasteneth is not? But if ye be without chastisement, wherefore all are partakers, then ye are bastards. And not sons. Now that's harsh language in the King James, but we all know what that means. Amen. My daddy loved me. Ain't a doubt in my mind. I told you that before. My daddy loved. I love my children. I love my children. I love my grandchildren. I do. I, I, I love my grandchildren. But don't you think for one time that I'm gonna let them get away with something that ain't supposed to be doing? Because I love my grandchildren, that's right. I'll spank them. Because I love my children, I spank them. Come on. I wish I could do it now sometime, but <laughs> that's a whole other sermon. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just saying, this is, well, I just don't believe in spanking. Well, you just been caught up in the lie of the devil. That's right. Because I'm just telling you what the Bible says. That's right. The Bible says, what father would not chasten their child if they love them? And I know God loves me. There's not a doubt in my mind God loves me. And I'm telling you right now, I'm telling you this from the pulpit. If I ever get out the way, if I, ever, I believe Dallas said something about last night. If I ever don't show up, somebody come find me, glory to God. If I ever get out the way, if I ever get out the will of God, and I start doing some stupid stuff, I hope God takes a power from out of heaven, comes down and beats the fire out of me, and gets me back where I need to be, because I don't want to go to hell. I know God loves me. So God's going to chastise those that He loves. So the four things, God's either going to send them to hell. I don't think God will do that to somebody that really loves Him. It's a Christian that's trying. He'll overlook their sin. We know He ain't going to do that. He'll chastise the ones He loves. We know He'll do that. Or He'll stop their sin in another way. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Talking about the Lord's Supper, verse 30, 32. For well, this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. He's talking about partaking the Lord's Supper the wrong way. If we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord that we should not be condemned with the world. The Bible says right there, some people die early. Some people are sick because they partake of the Lord's Supper unworthily. God don't play. And the thing about it is, you better understand something. If you say I'm a Christian, God really don't play. How many of y'all ever, how many of y'all ever when you was little, I just, I just put it in, in, in my mind. I remember we would, we would go to other people's houses. And, you know, mom and dad would tell us, you, all right, when we get in there, you do this, you do, you sit down, you do the, you know, you don't know how it is. People don't do that no more. <laughs> we go in that house. They say, you better sit down. Or you better stay in that bedroom. You better not be acting fool. Right. You get in there, you know, somebody you don't want to 
jumping from bed to bed, running into walls. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Don't say they get a hold on me now. <laughs> running into walls, having a time. My daddy go in there and take me outside and wear me out. Amen. And I'm thinking, they were doing it too. You know what the difference was? That wasn't his young. Amen. <laughs> That's the difference right there, brother Don Moon. That wasn't his young. Mm -hmm. Don't think that you can get away with some of the stupid stuff that other people get away with because they might not be his young. All that crowd you're running with might not be his young. I'm telling you right now, as long as you his young, you better straighten up because he's going to get your attention. Amen. God don't play, amen? That's right. Now, it's God that's going to deal with the sin. But God made some provisions. He made some provisions about sin. 1 Corinthians 15.34 says, Awake to righteousness and sin not. One of the provisions that God made about sin is don't sin. Amen? But ain't none of us can do that. Ain't none of us that good. Ain't none of us that. There wasn't the one that could do that. That was Jesus. Amen. 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 So we, we can't do that. We, we realize we can't do that. And then the Bible says in 1 John chapter 2, verse 1 says this. My little children, these things write unto you that you sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. When we, he made a provision. When we do sin and we will, he's made a helper. That's right. His name is Jesus. Yeah. God put that there. We got help. First John 1 9. If we confess our sin, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. God has put that there. But what if we refuse to confess? First John 1 9, we all we all quote it. The first word in that first John 1 9 is if. That's a big word. If. But what if we don't? What happens is if you don't confess your sins, you're taking your sins into your own hands, then. That's right. When I confess my sins, my sins go to Jesus. And Jesus takes care of it with God. Yeah. But when I hold on to my sin and I don't confess my sin, what I'm saying is I'll stand before God on my own. Just like I understand something. Just like I told you a while ago, and we said this a lot, nobody can understand the mercy and grace of God. We can't understand it. We can't fathom it. But nobody in this church, nobody on this earth can understand the wrath of God either. I don't understand the wrath of God. I, I, I don't understand the wrath. People ask me all the time, Preacher, why in the world did God tell them in the Old Testament go in and kill everything? I, 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 in my mind, I can kind of halfway say that, Brother Tony, God was trying to wipe out sin so they wouldn't be put me bothered with sin no more. And, that, and that, I, I don't understand the wrath of God. We would say, well, let's, let's, let's save those little children and raise them up to be Jews. But that ain't your God. Because He's God and you ain't. That's right. We don't understand the wrath of God. But you've got to understand something. God will be true to His character. God will not change. God, God has not changed from Genesis to Revelation, and God ain't going to change today. Understand that. Proverbs chapter 28, verse 13 says that He that covers his sin shall not prosper, but whoso confesses and forsaketh them shall have mercy. Psalms 32, verse 3 through 5 says this, When I kept silence, my bones waxed old through my roaring all the day long. For day and night thy hand was heavy upon me. My moisture is turned into the drought of summer. Say, Lord, I acknowledge my sin in thee. My iniquity have I my head. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin. Say, Lord, God will forgive. <coughs> Praise the Lord. We ought to shout it out right there that God will forgive. Amen. Amen. The problem with most of us, we don't think God already knows about our sin. Well, we got it here pretty good. Man, the preacher don't know what I'm doing. You better not worry about the preacher doing what you're doing. That's Come right. Amen. Right. <laughs> you better worry about the one that really knows what you're doing, knows what you're doing. 
God already knows. Now listen, I, I, I want to think about this. They're sins of the flesh. God knows about all of these now. They're sins of the flesh. We all, we all live in the flesh. And basically what Paul said, as long as we live in the flesh, then the, then the, the things of the flesh are going to be there. The lust of the flesh, the, the pride, the, 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 the eyes, our, our eyes, I mean, get us in trouble, amen? That's right. Most of us don't like to admit it. But we really have a problem with them eyes. You got sins of the flesh, then you got sins of weakness. There are some people that's just weak. There's some people that, that they, 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 they just, they just uh, uh, have a, a, a weak way about them. They, they can't say no. Somebody come on, hey, let's go. All right, let's go. Let me tell you something, folks. God already knows about that. And even though somebody might be weak, God ain't going to overlook it. We got sins of the flesh, sins of weakness. Then you got sins of ignorance. The Bible says, Him that knoweth it do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. What about sometimes when you don't know it's a sin? Oh, preacher. Don't, don't, don't get all holy on me now. There's young Christians that don't know everything, man. You know, preacher John. There's sometimes, let me ask you a question. There's sometimes that if I tell Brother Scooby, Brother Scooby, I'm going to be at your house at 10 o'clock. And something hinders me from coming, did I lie to him? Not intentionally. And I, there's a lot of things we don't do intentionally. But I'm just saying. How many times have you told God? How many times have you been on an altar and said, God, if you do this, Lord, if you'll just answer this prayer, I will do such and such and such and such. And for about two weeks, you did pretty good. But here lately, you ain't been doing so good. Did you lie to God? Yeah, not intentionally, but you did. Then you got sins of being tricked by the devil. That happens all the time. Sins of being tricked by the devil. All these, God already knows about all this. And then you got sins of willfulness. Now listen to what the Bible says. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26 says this. For if we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sin, but a certain fearful look for judgment and fiery indignation which shall devour the adversaries. He that despised Moses the law died without mercy, Did y'all hear that? He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. Of how much sorrow, punishment, suppose ye shall be thought worthy who hath trodden under the foot of the Son of God and hath counted the blood of the covenant where he was sanctified and unholy things and hath done despite under the Spirit of grace. For we know him that says, Vengeance belongs unto me. I will recompense, said the Lord. And again, the Lord shall judge his people. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of a living God. I really should have titled this God Don't Play. I thought about it when Robert was sitting on the front row. I thought about it. I might just preach this again Sunday morning. I don't know. This will be preached everywhere. Amen. There's no fear of God. If we sin willfully, let me ask you a question. Very serious question right now. How many of us have sinned willfully after you've been saved? <coughs> You knew it was wrong, and you did it anyway. Amen. You knew it was wrong, and you did it anyhow. And God allowed you to be here tonight. And God forgave you. We don't understand the mercy of God. We don't understand the wrath of God. 
Does God kill Christians? Yes, He does. I mean, we, we, we say what we want to. Will God let you commit apostasy? Yes, He will. I don't understand why God would do that. I don't understand how God, I don't understand how God operates in that. I told you I'm free will baptized. I believe a person can be saved. I believe a person can backslide, get out of the will of God. I believe that if they go so far, they commit apostasy. I, I believe that's what the word says. But my feeling is this when you commit apostasy, it ain't no coming back. Does God kill Christians? The thing I can say to you, if we don't understand God. We don't understand the ways of God. We don't understand the mercy of God. We don't understand the wrath of God. So the best thing you can do is don't play with sin. Now you are going to sin. But let me tell you something. If you leave out of here tonight and in the morning you do something that you know is wrong, don't, whatever you do, don't wait to Sunday morning Amen. to try to get right with God. Stop right then. I will never forget. I got saved. I went to work the next day. I was on the I was on that scaffold. We were laying brick and something happened. And I, I said a cuss word. And I stopped right then. And I asked God to forgive me right then on the spot. I didn't have another brick. I didn't spread no more mud. I asked God to forgive me on the spot right then. That's the way it has to happen. Well, I don't know. I told you before, we ain't Catholic. Too many free will Baptists and Baptists and Pentecostal and uh, what we call evangelical denomination. We think we're Catholic. We'll just, we'll just do what we want to do and then we'll go ask God to forget. It don't work that way. God don't play. God don't play, folks. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to go ahead and ask God to forgive me when I know I've done wrong. Because I don't want God to kill me. Amen. I want to go to heaven. Let me tell you something. I'm, I'll, I'll say a bold statement right now. If I ever get out there, preacher Mike, and I'm doing something I ain't got no business to it, before I bring a shame and reproach on God, I hope God take me out. I'll say that right now. Be careful, folks. Because God don't play. I told, Jane, I told Jackie to put it on the church sign, something that the preacher Mike said many years ago. Don't mistake God's approval. Or God's patience, or God's approval. Just because the hammer ain't fell, don't mean it ain't on the way down. Amen. I love you. I love you. We got to be very careful. This Christian, this Christian life is very serious. Too many people treat the Christian life just like it ain't nothing. Oh, I'm a Christian. Let me tell you something. It's a serious thing to be called a Christian. That means you're supposed to be Christ-like. How many of us we had to stand before God right now? I'm talking to the church. I know we means not most of us got Christians. How many of us we had to stand before God right now? We'd be ashamed. How many of us, if God, if, if God did what we know He should do? If we got what we really deserved, how many of us would be dead right now? Who would bow your heads? Brother Rob, y'all come to